We'll start with Jesse. If you can, just raise your hand. We'll bring the microphone to you. Sometimes, I guess, this game, you know, you, you can't tell because you were dominating possession. You had several fantastic chances, and uh, the penalty was called, and uh, that's the only thing that was probably the negative today for your side. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, with the first game of the season, you know we're not going to be our sharpest, and so we had certain moments where normally you'd see us either create better chances out of certain plays or finish plays off, and we don't quite do it. And, and you know, I mean... Uh, I'm not discouraged by that. I knew that today wasn't going to be our sharpest day just because it's the start of the year. But, uh, you know, we also, you know, the I guess the, the disappointing part from our end is we knew what this game was going to look like and we knew it was important to execute our game plan versus theirs. And in the end, they came in with a game plan and, and executed better than, than we did and, and they wind up winning. So congratulations to Toronto. Uh, and, you know, we just have to, to be a little bit sharper at moments and then understand that this is often what games look like when we play here. Jesse, we'll go to your right next here to Brian Lewis. Obviously, uh, you always have to give some amount of credit to the opponent, but when you have the ball as much as you did, maybe whatever, all, damn near two-thirds of the game, and it's hard to produce actual, it's hard to finish dangerous chances, the few dangerous chances that you got out. Frustrating is that or irritating is that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, um, it's, it's an easy talking point for the game because normally uh, you feel like the, cho the chance that Brad has, the, you know, a chance that Mike has, a chance that Lloyd has, those wind up going in. So, but they don't tonight, and you know, that, that's going to happen occasionally. So I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about that. I still thought there were a lot of really good moments, and I thought we, we had a lot of good moments where we managed the game well. And, and then you have two or three plays. I mean, literally in the whole game, there's two or three plays that get away from us, and two of them lead the goal. So this is going to happen sometimes. Uh, we, we need to, again, be better in those moments. But overall, I thought there was a lot of good. We'll stay there right here with Philip. Was this at all an example of what perhaps we were talking about a few days ago of another team coming in sort of with a plan against your specific style? And would there be a need for a plan B of some sorts? Is this at all like that or? or, or yeah, not? I mean, it is It is like that, you know? And I mean, the, there's been plenty of games here that have looked like what today looked like. Uh, you know, and, and listen, there, was, there were little little adjustments being made within the game to see if we can find a little way to create advantages. Uh, but, you know, I mean, again, a uh, lot of good, okay? A lot of good out of today, a lot of good performances, not our sharpest, which is normal at this time of year. And I think, you know, we have to expect these kinds of games at some times and this kind of approach. And we've just got to try and be better at now uh, making sure we don't let the game slip away. We'll go next to the left with Matt. Um, obviously, like you said, given that it is the first game of the season, it's kind of difficult to gauge how your team's at. But um, Gideon Ba looked very comfortable in the back in his debut. How would you assess his performance? I thought he was very good. Uh, clearly on the ball, he was fantastic. Uh, him and Ronald, I think, cut out a lot of plays, made it very hard on Giovinco. You know, he, he didn't touch the ball much, but <laughs> every time he does, he's dangerous. So it's not an easy task on the day. And, you know, it was good. I think he fit into the team seamlessly. So, yeah, I mean, that was a, a big positive. Him and Ronald both were big positives on the day. Um, I actually thought then the way that Dax and Felipe controlled the midfield for the most part, won a lot of balls, tried to set plays up ahead of them. You know, it's just we weren't – they, you know, Toronto really made things tight, and we weren't quite sharp enough at, at creating concrete advantages and then finishing the ones we had off. We'll go to your guys right here with Christian. Uh, coach, with uh – in the Columbus series, it was one of the things that we kind of noticed was that it seems like they were trying to press you a little bit, trying to go at your back line, keeping the team from building up. Did you notice a little bit of that today with Toronto, that they were trying to slow, you know, speed up the build up, if you will, more long balls out of your back line? Uh, Christian, I would actually go the other way. I would say they tried to stop the game and slow it down at almost every point, including goal kicks, throw-ins, fouls you know, at any moment. And then, you know, when we when we have the ball and we're starting to initiate the way we play, 
there were very few times where they pressed us and it caused us trouble. Almost every time they pressed us, we were able to, to get by that and then start to find uh, possession in the midfield. The major issue was going from the midfield into the final third and then trying to create little advantages there. But even then when we lose it, we'd go and try and counter press them right away and usually get the ball right back again. So, uh, you know, that's why I say there's a lot of good today in terms of what we want to play like and just on, a, on another day and later in the season where we're sharper, I think that it adds up more. We'll go next to a second right here, Justin. Uh, question for both of you guys. What did you think of the, the call that led to the, the penalty kick? Let's go to Luis. We'll start with Luis. Well, I mean, Giovingo played a great ball. I believe he was the one that played it in right with his left foot. Um, made a streaking run. And, and from that angle, it's always tough for a defender. You know, Kamar did his best to get back and hustle. Um, as far as as far as the way I saw it, it looked like a tough call. But when we watch the video, maybe it's going to be a little more clear. Regardless of the situation, we have to be aware not only of what's going on behind us and the runs that are coming in from the weak side, but we got to see today why Giovinco was last year's MVP. Just like Jesse mentioned previously, whenever he got a touch, it looked like he was going to do something dangerous. And so in a game like today where we had possession and we were doing our best to break him down and they were playing the counter, I felt for the most part we limited their opportunities, but the few opportunities that they did have, they were able to capitalize in a huge part because the quality of Giovinco. We'll go next to the left with Eric. You talked a lot about the tactical flexibility of this team throughout preseason. Uh, maybe for both you guys from on the field and the sidelines, what did you see from the way you were able to switch things up and move people around uh, on, the, on the field today? Yeah, well, we switched from two strikers to three. Um, midway through the first half just because we felt like they were really clogging the middle and it was hard to find space. Um, you know, it helped us create some advantages and really gain a grasp on the game. Then it, later in the game when we're trying to push, we switch back to two, thinking that, you know, uh, having a bong up there might give us one more presence in the box. Uh, you know, they're, they're backs for the most part on a lot of their aerial challenges and, and, and you know, little little plays they had to make defensively did pretty well and, and we weren't quite good enough. But, you know, I mean... Uh, when you're looking at the game, you're trying to figure out ways to help it, right? And and so I think that the fact that we have a little bit of the flexibility is good. But in in the end, uh, even with some of the little changes we try to make, we just weren't sharp enough. Uh, Toronto sat deep and really tried to just kind of frustrate, just kind of block you guys off. Is that something that you expect this year to see a lot more from other teams? A lot of you know sitting deep, letting you guys have the ball, have possession. And putting the onus on your team to try to break them down. Well, I mean, listen, it, it's partly an approach that other teams have, and then it's partly a reality of what it's like to play against us. Okay, so, uh, but that's we we try to build in a lot of different things to make sure that we don't, even when games look like today, that we don't let them get away, you know. But a lot of it requires us to to score a goal, get a lead. But even if we don't give a lead. The part that's frustrating is the the penalty. You just, I mean, literally, it was like one play that we let slip away, and then it, it cost us. So, uh, you know, we've saw, we've seen this in the past, so it's not it's not new. We'll go back left corner to Brian. Luis, at what point did you feel with the missed chances, the possession, that it might come down to a game of mental attrition, one mistake? Did you get that sense at any point in the game? I think right from right from the beginning, I felt that just the way that. They had approached the game tactically. They did a good job of staying compact, making it very difficult for us. And we understood that at that point, they were just going to spring Giovinco. So for us offensively, if we could not only track him, be aware of where he's at, and not let him make plays, we're, be, we're going to be in a good position. And unfortunately, in the second half, um, we just you know, we lacked a little of that, that mental toughness that's required to shut a player of that quality down. And we paid for it. But it's not necessarily something that we don't have. It's something that's part of the process. And as we continue to find our groove, get more comfortable with the way that teams are going to play against us, I think it's not a matter of if, but when that mental toughness prevails for us. We'll go over the left-hand side on the wall. Jesse, in the 15th minute, um, after the first corner of the game, I overheard you look to your staff and say, that's going to be dangerous for us. What makes you confident that you guys would be able to score from the air going forward? Uh, you, you know, we were good on set pieces last year, and I expect us to be uh, effective in, on set pieces again this year. Um, yeah, so I think I think we'll we'll continue to be dangerous in some of those moments. We'll take two more questions first here, Eric on the left. 
Last year, you, you guys didn't have to deal with this losing feeling until maybe seven or eight games of the season. Now, first one off the bat, you guys are in the hole. How do you guys bounce back? What's the, the mental makeup of this team going forward? Well, you, you know, for me, there's going to be very few talking points about last season. This is a new season. It's a new group. It's a new movement, right? And reality is that, you know, we've like, I'm not, the, today's result doesn't change my opinion of anything. I feel like we have a good group. I feel like we have a good way of playing. I feel like we're on top of games a lot. I feel like uh, there's more to our team right now than ever before, and and it's just a matter of having it, you know, continue to move forward in a really positive way. So, uh, you know, and we have a really strong group of men in that locker room who I know can handle any moment that's thrown at us. So, you know, it's a it's a little good reminder that it's it's never easy, and we're gonna have to earn everything. We'll take our last question here to the back right. Jesse, the is the cause of the refs um, maybe frustrated the team also? And I saw at the end of the game, the game was finished, and one of the refs pulled out a yellow card to Philip Wright. Well, was yeah, I didn't see. I, I, someone had told me that Bradley got a yellow, but I don't know about that. Yeah, I mean, I just tried to communicate with the fourth official that – Again, it's his job to sort of understand what's happening in the game. And there's one team that's trying to slow the game down at all moments, and there's other teams that another team that's trying to get it going. And that that tactic, for me, the slowing down tactic has to be mitigated by the referee by either handing out yellows or doing something to try and speed speed the game up. Not just to help us, but because the game's supposed to operate in a way that moves along. So. Uh, didn't didn't feel like he did a great job of that, but that that wasn't why we 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 lost tonight. That'll wrap up today's press conference. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks, Luis.